One of the most important parts about insect curation is labeling. If you don't have the correct label, then the specimen is pretty much useless. And so when we put labels on specimens, it's real important that we have the county, the state, lat longe, and it has to be in decimal degrees. Um, the uh, date it was collected, and then who collected it. These are the five most important uh, things you should have on your label. And you make labels for both pin specimens and for specimens in ethanol. What we use is acid-free, lignin-free paper. This is 65-pound paper that's acid-free and lignin-free. Um, and then we use a simple uh, laser jet printer to make this. Now, uh, the font is pretty small. What you want to use for your pin specimens is you want to use 3.5 font. And you can make this through Word, Microsoft Word, um, or Microsoft Excel to get your labels to the size that you want it. For ethanol specimens in al alcohol, um, again we use acid-free, lignin-free paper. And with the acid-free, lignin-free paper, it prevents the ink from coming off the paper in, al in alcohol. If you try to use an ink jet, um, sometimes the ink will come right off the paper after it's been in ethanol for a while. For the alcohol labels, we use a label that's a little bit larger, and we use eight point. We use eight font to make the labels for that. Are dry after they've been pinned and they they are dry. It usually takes about 24 hours, and you could then take the piece of paper from underneath your specimen, and the legs and the mouth parts, however you display them will be in that position um, and then you can put the labels on. Now with pinned specimens um, we have uh, several types of labels here. We have the label that has the collection information uh, with lat longe um, and the collector and date. Uh, with pinned specimens you're going to put it, pin it right through the center of the label and you want to try and make sure you're putting the pin through the label so it's not affecting any of the words. Okay, You want to leave a little bit of space so you can be able to read the information on the label. If the label is all the way up at the top then you won't be able to read the information. Usually there's a second label for example uh, there's a, a label that says where it was collect, uh, how it was collected whether it's from a pitfall trap, a malaise trap or off of a specific plant and then you put that label underneath it. Again you want to leave space at least about five millimeters or ten millimeters uh, so you can be able to read the information on the first label and on the second label. And then there's also room here for a possible third label if you put one on. So here is a, another pin specimen With this pin specimen, I'm going to pin it right through the center of the label so it's not affecting any of the words. And I also pin it through the second label. And the second label is an extraction label. On this label, it basically says extracted from velvet mesquite. This is a type of mesquite plant, and you usually put the species. And so this beetle is collected off of that particular species of plant. This is a carpenter bee. It's spread out nice. And the tongue is out. Identification. I'm going to take this bee and I pin it through the center of the label. And it has all the collection information where it was collected, the date, lat longe, and also the person who collected it. This bee was collected off of velvet mesquite. Prosopis velutina. And so there's another label, a second label associated with this specimen of where it was, it was found pollinating. So it was pollinating Prosopis velutina. I put that label on there too. And I leave enough space between each label so I can read the information on both labels. If both labels are too close together or too far up on the specimen, 
then you will not be able to read the information on the label. So this is a specimen on a point. You have to pin the label a different way. I pin it on the side of the label, on the right side of the label, and all the information reads from left to right lengthwise with the point. And then I do the same thing with the second label. So this is a pinned specimen and here's a pointed specimen. With a pinned specimen the information is directly in the center of the label and they need to be spaced out far apart to where you can read it. The same spacing also for a pointed specimen. But you can see how the labels are, are pinned differently. The labels on a pointed specimen are pinned on the right side, reading left to right, of the length of the point. With a pinned specimen, the labels always read from left to right, head to abdomen on the specimen. So this one's on a minutin pin, and it gets pinned the same way as a pointed specimen. So I'm going to pin it through the label. On the right side of the label, Okay, and I leave about 10, meter, 10 millimeters distance from the specimen to the label. And this, this is a bee. It was collected off of velvet mesquite, Prosopis velutina. So I have a second label here. And so this is the species of plant that the bee was found on. And so when you're setting up a collection, it's also good to have uh, host plants of where, or host specimens of where the specimen came from. Uh, so if you collected a flea off of a cat, then you could put extracted Felis domestica. <clears throat> Moths and butterflies, you put the label on them the same way you would with a pinned insects. So with pinned insects, again, it's going to read from left to right, head to abdomen. So butterflies and moths. It looks like you have some space up here at the front, but it's still better than having it going from left to right of the thorax. Now with specimens and alcohol, you use bigger labels. These labels are for specimens that be put in alcohol. I have here a spider all arachnids and any arthropod that has more than six legs um, and also soft-bodied insects go in alcohol. So this one is an arachnid, it's a spider, it's got more than six legs, it definitely goes in alcohol and I need to put a label in here. When I put a label in this, in this vial, the label should be facing outside so you can read it and you give it a little bend and slide the label into the alcohol. And You can usually do it with your hands or a pair of forceps to set the label in there. Nice. <clears throat> so now I have the label in there with the specimen and I can turn it on the other side. I can see the specimen in great detail. Um, I can see the side of it. I can also see the back, the, the uh, dorsal side and ventral side of the specimen. And I also have my label in there and I could see all the information on the label. When you put labels in alcohol vials though, you need to make sure it's acid-free, lignin-free paper. Otherwise the print will come off in the ethanol. And you need to use a laser jet. <clears throat>